The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 506. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She's a travel blogger, and she also has her own podcast, which is called The Offbeat Life, and I'm really excited to have her on today to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to, to Debbie Arcangeles. Debbie, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hey, Sheena, thank you so much for having me in your show. I am so excited to be here, especially with the topic that you are sharing with everybody. So hi, everyone. My name is Debbie Arcangelis. I am, like Sheena had mentioned, I'm a travel blogger and also mostly a podcaster. So I interview inspiring individuals who ditch the norm to live their best life and are also location independent. When I'm not doing my podcast, I am a therapist for children who have who are diagnosed with autism. So that's pretty much what I do during the day. And at night, I do all of the things creative and travel whenever I can. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Debbie, what's your cultural background? I am Filipino. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? So my favorite quote that I always tell myself and other women as well is, especially with social media being a huge part of all of our lives now, is never compare yourself to others because you can never be the better version of them. You can only be the better version of you. So I always tell myself that whenever I have doubts, especially since I am in social media. And that's also great just for every day. Thanks for sharing that. And I've been guilty with the compare game. I remember like when I first started this podcast, I was just like, these women are amazing. And I'm just like, I haven't done anything. (laughs) It really crippled me for a while, but I had to realize like, you know, I'm glad these women have gone over and beyond to show us what's possible. So thanks for sharing that quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? For me, self-confidence is really being okay with whatever it is that you are achieving for yourself. So again, not comparing what you're doing to other people and being happy with even the smallest accomplishments that you have. Because we can get really into the comparing game and even to ourselves, we're really hard on ourselves, especially Asian women. So (laughs) I grew up with a lot of with families, especially women who are very strong in my family. And we were actually pushed more than the men in my family. And for me, being self-confident is to just be okay with what you're doing at that moment and not having to look at anything further except what you're doing. Because I feel like a lot of times when we keep looking out and we're saying to ourselves, well, I need to do better, you know, for this, this and this, but we're not really looking at what's in front of us. Then your self-confidence becomes a lot less because of that, because not only then do we compare ourselves to others, but also with our future selves. I don't know if that makes sense. (laughs) No, totally. I think we what we tend to forget is to celebrate all the small success that we have in our lives, right? We always feel like we have to make a big step to increase confidence to build confidence. But you know, confidence starts with the small steps, the small daily actions, which really yield to the big results. So you know, the more we celebrate every little milestone that we have, the more we get confident. And you know, because if we can't appreciate the little success, how are we going to appreciate the bigger ones. So I think it's really important to celebrate every single moment, you know, as long as you're moving forward, and you know, your goal is to get better than you were yesterday, then that's a celebration on its own. So I really love your definition. And Debbie, what was your life like before your discovery of self confidence? So as I had mentioned before, I grew up with very strong women in my family, which I'm very fortunate (laughs) to have because I know a lot of women don't have that. So I always saw it in everywhere around me. And of course, I didn't 
you know, we have confidence in something that grows, right? We were not born with that, but it helps when you see it around you. So I definitely saw a lot of self-confidence from my mom, my aunts, my cousins, all of those things. So before I really had self-confidence, before I knew myself, I think the, I mean, the time when I really had none was I think when I first came to the United States, even when I was little, I had a lot of (laughs) self-confidence. But coming to a different country and not really knowing the language, I felt so self-conscious because I had this image in my head or even just thought because every time I was in the Philippines, like I had people around me that were always very positive and saying all of those things. And I still had that here in the United States. But then then you get a little twist to it where you also don't know the culture. You don't know the language. Everyone is new. Not everyone is Filipino. So it's it's it was so different. So before that, um, I did have self-confidence even as a young child. And I came here, I lost it. And it felt so it felt like I was stripped from my own identity because now I had to I had to blend the two cultures together and then had to get to know myself in a different place with different people, even just knowing new families here in the United States. was it was a very hard time for for me and the self-confidence was very low. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's something as, you know, immigrant children can relate, right? Especially like you go to this country and then, you know, you're like the odd person out and then, you know, you want to try to assimilate with the culture and it's hard. It's like, you know, you walk and talk like them, but then you look in the mirror, you're like, whoa, wait a second. It's like, you know, my skin isn't white. My eyes are a little slanty. And, you know, we forget about that. And then we feel like we're not enough because we don't look like them. Right. And it hurts our confidence. But, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized, like, you know, you were more than enough to go out there and be the person that you are today, especially, you know, being a travel blogger? Like, what was that aha moment? So the aha moment for me, I guess it didn't just come, you know, oh, my goodness, I just had that one moment. I think it was just knowing and seeing everyone around me and especially living in New York, there's so many different types of people. And also just learning the language more. And obviously now I do know it. I'm fluent and I've been here for a really long time. But I think the the self-confidence for me really grew after high school, you know, because high school is very awkward. You know, college was great. And I think it was when I started really be having to create and I was always very artistic and that gave me a lot of boost and confidence. So that also made me stand out and people took notice of me in that sense. And because of that, because of something that I created, I was able to to boost up my confidence in that sense and finding something creative, finding myself in the process. So like I said before, self-confidence doesn't come in one day. Like I don't just have that one moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm, you know, I have all the self-confidence. I don't. Even today as an adult, there's always something that I'm not confident about. And I always try something new. And there's always something that makes me step back and say, oh my gosh, I'm clueless at this. My self-confidence is extremely low. So It's definitely something I'm always working on. But every time I try something new and I don't know it or someone else knows more than me, it definitely lowers the (laughs) self-confidence. And then every time I get better at something, that's when I have an aha moment. So I feel like every time I get better at something and I boost that self-confidence up, then that's I get an aha moment every time. (laughs) Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I I mean, every time we try something new and it works, it's like, oh my God, like, I can't believe I've, I did that. Like, I'm the bomb. And then you're like, what else can you do, right? Like, even if it's something as simple as like, I don't know, an Excel spreadsheet, right? Because most people actually don't, you have a hard time with doing that, like my mom does. (laughs) So it's like, the first time she made it work, she's like, oh my God, it worked, right? And it's like these little moments make us realize what we're capable of. And, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? My life. So I I tell this all the time to all of my friends. I mean, I'm the type of person that I just go for whatever it is that I'm interested in. And I learned that early on. I'm not the type of person who just sits around and thinks about things. I even if I don't know anything. So, for example, I started podcasting. I 
probably have only heard maybe three to four podcasts and I already knew that's what I wanted to do. I didn't know anything about editing. I didn't know anything about the industry. But because of the self-confidence that was rooted in me already, some from family and Obviously, a lot of it comes from myself and how I handle certain things. I just try anything. And even if I fail, and I think that's the biggest thing is that I don't look at uh, because a lot of times when we have failure, right, it doesn't boost your confidence. Obviously, it makes it really low. And that's really a part of, of that as well. It's the feeling of failure. And that really affects your your confidence level. So by gaining all of the the confidence and from having all of the failures, I actually gained the self-confidence because I knew that what was, what's the worst thing that, that can happen to me? You know, I could fail and then I just move on or I keep going until I figure out how to do this the right way. So now it's, you know, whatever it is that I want to try, I just do it. And whether I fail or succeed for me, it's always that I'm learning. And that's really my biggest takeaway from everything. If I'm learning something, then it's never, you know, it's it's never a failure. It's always something good. Thank, thanks for sharing. Then I love that perception you have about failure because, you know, we've been programmed to see failure as something like the end of all ends. Not realizing it's just part of the process. It's a learning process. It helps us progress to move forward, to help us, you know, become strong people. And, you know, I like how you mentioned you just go for it, right, without even thinking about it. I mean, when I first started podcasting, I didn't even listen to any. I just knew that this was the platform I wanted to use. And yeah, you know, it was frustrating, but I made it work. So we can learn to figure it out along the way. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? So the one tip I would say is that Whatever it is that you're dreaming about, whatever it is that you want to do with your life, it's always going to be a dream until you take that first step. So whether it's something really small, just, you know, to a trip that you want to go to or uh, moving to a different country or as big as that, it's never going to be anything other than a dream until you actually do it. So I'm not telling you to make anything drastic right now, unless you really want to do that. But if you do something, just one thing every day that will help you get closer to that, we don't know what's going to happen a month from now or even a year from now, because that's going to get you a little closer to it. So I think there's a lot of misconception from people that in order to do something great, you have to do something right now. And that's something really big. I think the ones that really do make an impact are the ones that just do something one thing at a time. So I I definitely learned that for myself as well. And it definitely also boosts your self-confidence when you feel like you are actively doing something every single day and you're not just there sitting around thinking about it. I think when we're actively doing something is what helps us and it gets us motivated and it boosts our, our confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a great tip. You know, it took me a long time to realize like taking small steps actually is more productive than trying to take that big leap, especially when we don't reach in, we get disappointed with ourselves. You know, Um, these small daily actions really do build those big results. And the more we keep practicing, the better, the better we get at it. Right. So I really love the tip that you mentioned. And Debbie, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, check out your podcast, check out some of your cool travel pictures. Is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Definitely. If you want to check out my podcast, you can visit theoffbeatlife.com. And that's where you're going to see all of the episodes that I've done so far. And from all of the men and women, and most of them are travelers. But my main focus is for people who are location independent, who have freedom, for their time that they actually own and they make an income and career from that. And if you want to see more of my travels, you can also check me out on Instagram. My handle is at Offbeat Trucker. It's O-F-F-B-E-A-T-T-R-E-K-K-E-R. And you'll see all of my travels from there as well. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Debbie, you can also head on over to the selfconfidence.com and search for Debbie's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Debbie for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you so much, Sheena. I'm so honored to be on your show. 
Not a problem. It was really an honor to have you on. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.